This is BNH, and in this video, we'll demonstrate how to shoot splash photography using fake milk and food props. Splashes frozen in midair give an image an ethereal look that can help elevate the image. For this tutorial, we'll create a composite image of cookies cascading into a cup of milk with the milk splashing around the cup and cookies. Making a splash image is simple, fun, and can be done in the comfort of your own home. This tutorial will cover the process of shooting the milk splashes and other photo elements that will be composited together in Photoshop. We'll start with the props, specifically the fake milk. To make the milk for this shoot, I'll combine Elmer's glue with water. This works perfectly as a milk substitute in photo and video shoots. Real milk can be off-white or yellowish under certain lighting, and it doesn't have the same thick viscosity that we want for a splash shot. Elmer's glue will look pure white, even mixed with water. I want to do a lot of splashing, so I'll start with a few cups of water. I'm using a magnetic mixer, which is perfect to stir the mixture to the right consistency. You don't need a mixer, a blender or even a whisk in a bowl can work fine to stir the glue and water together. I'm going for a 2 to 1 ratio of water to glue, which will require a few bottles of glue. It takes time and a lot of stirring to get the mixture consistent, so make sure you do this ahead of your shoot. For the food props, I'll use Oreo cookies, which will be dunking into the milk to create the splash in the photo. These are regular store-bought cookies, so you want to get a pack or two to find cookies that haven't been crushed or crumpled in the box. Oreos have a very intricate design on each cookie, so you want to find the cookies that are the most intact. I've picked out a dozen or so cookies that look good, though some may require a few tweaks like aligning the cookies and cream to look more centered. Now that the cookies and milk are ready to be photographed, let's set up for the shoot. For this shoot, I'm using three strobe lights. One pointed at the wall with a blue gel attached to create a blue gradient background. The other two strobes have soft boxes attached which will provide the key light coming from the back and the side. I have a foam core board standing on the table which is used as fill to bounce the light coming from the soft boxes. The milk glass will sit on a black acrylic slab which will give the objects a reflection underneath while also reflecting the blue light from the background. Before shooting, Make sure to clean the black acrylic to the best of your ability. I find wearing gloves, using Windex, and wiping it with a microfiber cloth works best to clean the surface of any dust or fingerprints. The equipment is set up and we're ready to start shooting. For a composite image like this, we want to make sure all the images we're stitching together are lit the same so they blend together seamlessly. So be sure not to move the camera or the lights much once you start shooting. First, I'll get a few blank shots with just the milk glass on the table. This will be our base image that we can build off of. I'll add some stacks of cookies and a cookie standing to fill the space next to the cup. I'll also grab a shot of the cookie standing solo without the stacks. It's good to get a variety of base shots before things get messy, so you have different options for the final image you want to put together. Next, I want to get some shots of cookies floating in the air around the milk and the table. These will simulate the cookies falling into the milk. For these shots, I inserted a small wooden dowel into the cookie, and I'll use it to position the cookie around the frame. I want a variety of positions and cookies that could be composited into the final image anywhere I want. Now that we have some basic photo elements to use for the composite, we'll start shooting the milk splashes. I went ahead and covered the area with plastic wrap and wax paper, since the splashes will create quite a mess. I put some plastic wrap in the background, but left the blue strobe on so the blue light will show through the plastic wrap. This will allow some of the blue light to come through on the splashes or the falling cookie crumbs, so they'll be easier to composite and they'll look more natural. To create the splashes, I have several clear acrylic cubes that are used as fake ice cubes for cocktail photos. Since they're clear, it's very easy to remove them from the image in Photoshop. To get an image of the splash, we want to have the camera trigger go off once the acrylic cube falls into the glue. This takes a bit of practice, but it's actually very easy to do without any specialized gear. With one hand, I'll hold the acrylic cube, and in the other hand, I'll have my finger on the camera trigger. When dropping the cube into the milk, keep your eye on the center of the glass. You want to trigger the camera right as the cube hits the middle of the cup, otherwise you'll catch the splash too early. I was able to get a good splash shot on my first try, which has a nice large crown with several arms twisting about to the left side. As you can see, the splash created a bit of a mess, but luckily it's only limited to the table. To get the perfect splash shot, you need to take dozens of images to find the right one. There's no perfect process to getting it right on the first try, you just need to keep splashing and shooting. Here's another splash image I got with some great looking twists in the arms, but the splash is very high in the front. 
I'm looking for a splash with a larger wave in the back so you can see the cookie where it enters the milk. As you can see in some shots, I miss the splash entirely, so you need to develop a rhythm of shooting the splashes over and over until you get something you like. After many tries, I finally got a splash crown that I like a lot. It has some good twists in the arms and has a shorter wall on the front so we can see inside the splash. This will allow us to composite a cookie into that area easily. Now that we have a good splash image, I want to get a variety of other milk splashes and pours to use in the image. First we'll need to do a bit of cleanup. The best thing about using Elmer's glue is that it doesn't go bad or smell foul like real milk does, and it's easy to clean up. If you get any spilled on your floor or light stands, don't worry, it wipes off clean and it's easy to remove if it dries. I'll use a paper towel to get most of the glue off the acrylic, then just lift it off the table to wash in the sink. The photo table is cleaned and it's reset, so it's time to get some milk pours. I'll use a large bowl and pour milk from the glass into the bowl. I want to get a large spitting pour of milk that we can insert into the cup or maybe have it splashed down onto a cookie. This is easier to capture than the milk splash and takes just a few tries to get a variety of shapes. I'll pour from different angles to get a variety to work with. With this setup, I'll also use a little bowl to capture some additional splash shapes that could be added to the image, whether it's droplets of milk or full waves. The idea is to get as many splash assets that could be used for the composited image. After another round of cleanup, it's time to get some shots of cookie crumbs falling. I'll have a plate to catch the crumbs and I'll use my hands to drop them on the plate. After a few shots of falling crumbs, our first problem becomes apparent. The flash duration from the strobe is too long, so the falling pieces of the cookies are not frozen in midair. Instead, there's a bit of motion blur created from the strobe. While a flash from a strobe appears instant to the human eye, the duration can vary on different models, and this can be too long for action shots. Some higher-end strobes have faster strobe times that will freeze the motion in midair, but the strobes I'm currently using are at the limit of what they're capable of doing. I did a few test shots at different power outputs, and I removed all the natural light in the room, but the motion blur was still there. To circumvent this problem, I took a bunch of the cookie pieces and simply held them in my hand in different positions. I'll mask out my hand from the image and use these pieces in the final image. The last setup will use a small shot glass, which will allow me to get some smaller scale splashes. This is intended to create some splashes that will surround a cookie as the milk is poured on it. For these splashes, I'll move the camera higher and look into the middle of the splash. I want a wide yet small splash that matches the size of the cookies. With the shooting process done, it's time to break down and clean up the mess that I made. I'll import the images onto my computer and start editing. First, I'll batch edit the raw images, doing some basic white balance, exposure, and contrast tweaks. I like to review and label my favorite images in Adobe Bridge. What I'm looking for are different portions of the splashes or different areas of the image that I can utilize for the final image. To start with the compositing process, I'll first work with the base image. I chose the image of the glass of milk with the stack of cookies next to it as my base image. Before going crazy with compositing, I want to do a quick cleanup of any dust or cookie crumbs. For this process, I use a combination of the healing brush and the clone stamp tools. These are easy to use tools that allow you to remove dust and scratches with ease. Using the Alt or Option key, make a selection of a clean area of the image and then simply brush over the dirty area you want removed. There's a lot of dust still on the black acrylic, so I want to be thorough. When doing dust cleanup, make sure you zoom in on the image to at least 100% or more. There's some streaks from the Windex on the black acrylic as well, so I'll use the healing brush to clean up this mess. I'm going to do some cleanup on the cookies themselves. The cream centers have a lot of cookie crumbs on them, so I'll use the clone stamp to remove these. The clone stamp tool is perfect for parts of the image where you want to repeat information in the image, whereas the healing brush can sometimes make soft blurry artifacts with these complex areas. After about 10 minutes of dust removal, the base image is looking clean. Now it's time to start compositing image elements. I'll start with adding the milk splash to the glass of milk. Open the image and use the lasso tool to make a rough selection of what you want to composite. You can use Ctrl C or Command C to copy this and simply paste it into a new layer and the base image with Ctrl V or Command V. The splash I selected was actually shot at a different angle, so the size is larger than the cup. First, I'll lower the opacity by hitting 4 to change the opacity of the layer to 40%. You can use Ctrl T or Command T to open the free transform tool, which will allow you to resize the splash to fit onto the cup. Since the splash was done in the same cup, I'll size it to roughly match the size of the cup in the base image. With the splash sized, hit 0 to return the opacity to 100%. I want to cut out the splash shape, so I'm going to hit P to use the pen tool. 
This is a great tool for creating paths that allows you to cut out parts of the image. Simply select a starting point, which I'll start on the rim of the glass. Click to create a path point and then click along the splash shape to make a second path point. The path points are connected by a line segment, which can be altered to conform to the shape of the splash. There's two little arms that protrude from the path points. One that alters the line segment ahead of it and the other alters the line segment that connects to it. Holding the Alter Option key, you can select the path point and drag the arms to change the shape of the line segment. This seems very complicated at first, but it's a great and fast way of masking items and it gets easier the more you do it. As you keep making path points in the image, just hold the mouse button down as you click and pull the arms so the path point moves the line segment. When you get a good groove going, you're simply clicking along and pulling the arms to create curved line segments. When you reach around the splash, click the first path point to close the path. With the path complete, I'll right click and select Make Selection in the drop down menu. This will turn your path into a selection, which can then be made into a mask by pressing the mask button at the bottom of the layer window. When this mask is created, this will cut out the splash from the background of the original image. The mask is hiding the unnecessary information and it doesn't delete it, so it's still available if you want to bring it back. The splash image is a bit darker, so I'll use a curves layer to brighten it up so it matches the cup. Right click on the curves layer and select create clipping mask. This will allow the curves layer to only affect the splash layer directly under it and not the rest of the image. This is really useful for doing adjustment layers that only affect one layer. While it does look like the splash is coming out of the cup, there's a gap of empty space under the splash from the base image. Using the brush tool, I'll select the layer mask and brush the detail back to blend it into the base image. The layer mask is the box next to the layer which is filled with white and black. The white portions of the layer mask are what is showing through the mask, and the black portions are what are hidden. Select the layer mask and use a white brush to paint the detail back. I like to use a brush at a low opacity, around 30% with 0% hardness, to gently brush the detail back and blend the splash and cup together. I'll play with the curves layer a bit to make the darker area match the cup, and now they look pretty good blended together. Now it's time to start bringing in some of the floating cookies. I'll open the images I like and make a rough selection around the cookie with the lasso tool, then copy and paste it into my base image. This time around, I'll use the magic wand tool, since all the information around the cookie is a solid blue, and it'll be easier to mask out. First, I'll add a layer mask to the cookie layer by pressing the layer mask button at the bottom of the layer window. Next, I'll press W to open the magic wand tool. I'll simply select the blue area around the cookie and press Control shift delete or Command shift delete on Mac to fill the area of the layer mask with black, which will remove the unwanted portions of the image. The magic wand tool did not select the stick, so I'll just use the pen tool to quickly remove this by following the general shape of the cookie. Right click on the layer mask and use the select and mask option to make adjustments to the mask itself, such as smoothness, feathering, and shift edge. This will remove the choppiness of the edge of the mask and smooth it out to look more natural. I like to set the feathering to around one pixel and use the shift edge to pull the mask back just a little bit. This tool is helpful when trying to remove any halo left over from a background when masking an image. With the cookie cut out, I'll use the clone stamp tool to remove the stick and the cookie is all set. Now the cookie can be moved around the image and placed anywhere you want. Next, I want to add a cookie into the splash so it looks like it's falling into the cup and creating the splash. I chose this cookie image because it specifically has the logo showing upright and it can be seen as the cookie falls into the cup. I'll use the same process of copying the cookie onto the image using the magic wand tool to create an image mask and then adjusting the mask to look smooth. Since the masks on the cookies are finalized, I like to right click on the layer mask and use apply layer mask which will permanently apply the mask to the layer to delete the hidden information. This is helpful to keep file sizes small since composited images like these can get very big. I'll drag the cookie into the middle of the splash and get an idea of where the cookie will sit in the splash. Turn off the cookie layer so you can see the splash underneath. I'll use the pen tool to make a selection along the edge of the front wall of the splash. This is the part of the splash that we want to cover the cookie. I'll just select most of the area and then turn the cookie layer back on to see how far along the edge I need a path. I'll go around the cookie quickly to close the path and apply a layer mask to the cookie layer. As you can see, the mask is selecting the wrong portion of the cookie, so we just need to invert the mask. Select the layer mask and press Ctrl-I or Command-I to invert the mask. 
Now it appears that the cookie is inside the splash, and the front wall of the splash is covering half the cookie. There's some extra droplets that I want to cut out, so I'll use the circular marquee tool to make a selection around the droplets and fill those selections with black in the layer mask to allow the droplets to show over the cookie. The cutout looks a little rough, so I'll use the select and mask tool to adjust the mask edge to smooth it out and look more natural. The cookie looks pretty good in the splash and appears to be causing the splash, but it looks a little unnatural. We'll create a fake shadow to cast onto the cookie so there's some separation. Select the layer mask on the cookie layer, right click and select add mask to selection. This will allow you to use the same mask on another layer. I'll create a new layer and apply the layer mask to this layer, and then I'm going to fill this layer with any random color. This will create a shape that we'll use as a template to cast a shadow onto the cookie. Right click on the shape layer and go to blending options. Photoshop has many blending options available. For now, we'll use the drop shadow option. I like using the drop shadow blending option because you can change the effect at any time, and there's several options to move the shadow around and change its opacity. I want the direction of the shadow to match the lighting in the scene and cast onto the cookie. Once I make a shadow that I like, right click on the shadow layer and click create clipping mask. This will apply the shadow to just the cookie layer directly underneath and not to the rest of the image. Once that shadow is applied to the cookie, I'll play with the shadow layer a little bit more to get it somewhere that I like. We have a lot of layers now, so it's time to do a little organization. I'll label the cookie layers and shadow layers. Select the cookie and shadow layer and press Ctrl G or Command G to place them into a folder together. I like using folders to keep similar layers together and it makes the layer panel a little bit more organized. I went ahead and added several more cookies and placed them around the image, so there's something filling the space above the milk splash. The next element I want to add is the milk pouring into the cup behind the cookie. I'll use the same process as the splash, using the lasso tool to copy it into the image and then cut it out with the pen tool. I'm using the pen tool this time because the highlights reflecting off the plastic wrap in the background can confuse the tool and select the milk pouring by accident, so it's just easier to use the pen tool. With the milk pour cut out, I'll place it into a position I like on the left side and move the layer underneath the cookie in the splash. There's some blue halo around the milk pour, so I'll use select and mask to refine the edge and pull the edge in a bit to cut out the halo. I'll use the same shadow process to add another shadow from the pour onto the back wall of the splash. Adding the shadows helps separate the elements and it looks more natural. I want to keep adding elements to the image, so I'll select one of the larger milk pours and add that to the image. Use the pen tool to cut it out and remove the background and position this pour at more of an angle from the top right of the frame. I want this pour to fall onto a cookie and have a splash wrap around the cookie in midair. I selected one of the smaller splashes that was done in a shot glass. This has a perfect shape to fit a cookie inside. I'll use the same process of cutting it out with the pen tool and I'll rotate the splash around. I found a cookie image that looks perfect to fit into the splash, so I'll just add this to the image and cut it out. This will be the same as the other splash. I'll make a layer mask on the cookie that matches the front wall of the splash, so it looks like the cookie is sitting inside the splash. I'll select the layer mask of the milk pour and brush out the part of the milk pour that I don't want in the image with a black brush. I added some droplets to this splash, which have a dark blue halo around them with some motion blur from the slow strobe lights. I like the look of the droplets with the motion blur since it appears to have some natural velocity to them and that adds something to the image. I want to blend in the halo portions, so I'll use the brush tool on the layer mask and brush away the halo with a very low opacity brush, around 10-20%. to I'll do several passes to remove the darker portions, while trying to keep the lighter blurred portions in the image. For parts like this, a Wacom tablet is definitely a big help for the amount of painting you'll have to do. I like the way the splash looks with the milk pouring behind it, but it needs a little extra splash behind, so I'm going to add another flatter looking splash. Again, I'll copy this in and use the pen tool to cut it out. With the splash cut out, I'll place it behind the other splash, but in front of the milk pour. The milk pour looks a little bit small by comparison, so I'll use the free transform tool to increase the size so it looks like a lot of milk is falling onto the cookie. The last element I want to add is some of the crushed cookies and cookie crumbs. I'll use the same process with these and use the magic wand tool to cut them out, since there's enough contrast between the cookie and the background. 
For the crumbs that I'm holding in my hand, I'll use the pen tool to create a natural looking break in the cookie around where the fingers are. For the smaller crumbs, I'll use the brush tool to gently paint around the crumb so they blend into the background naturally. I'll assemble the crumbs between the cookies and milk splashes to fill in some of the areas of the image. With the crumbs added to the image, I think we've reached a good stopping point on the composite. Adding the different elements together was time consuming, but overall very simple, and we created a pretty cool image. Now it's time to critique and analyze the image. As a fun at-home project, we have a vivid action shot with a lot going on that would be fun to post on social media. Looking at this through the eyes of, let's say, a creative director creating an ad campaign for those cookies, what we have is one very chaotic image with way too much going on. The milk pouring into the glass with the cookie also in the glass clashes against one another. The cookie splash in the top right looks out of place, and the motion blur on the crumbs but the complete static look of the fallen cookies clash completely. There's so much happening in the frame that there's no room for a logo or copy which makes it difficult to use this anywhere. I think for the purposes of this tutorial, this image works. But now let's look at something toned down. Here's an alternate version I created with just the glass, the cookie, and the milk splash. I removed the cup and splash from the background and added a gradient behind that matches the color of the logo. I added a few splash arms to the splash to fill in some of the empty spots. I also moved the cookie up slightly so we can see the logo printed on the cookie more clearly. Now we have a simple image that's more suited for a campaign, while still being an action shot with the fallen cookie and milk splash. I did another version with the same milk splash, but kept the stacks of cookies on the right as well as a few of the fallen cookies. This has the same energy as the chaotic image, but it's still toned down quite a bit. I left room in the top right corner that's suitable for copy or a logo. I made one more version of this same image but with the milk pouring into the cup and creating the splash with the cookies floating around the milk pouring. The point of these alternate versions is to demonstrate that when making image composites, you can take assets of the image and rearrange them in any way that you please. This is helpful when working in creative environments where the needs of your client or creative direction may change over time, so you need the flexibility to rearrange the image in many different ways or use the same assets to make different images all together. This is B&H, and if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.